Welcome to Module 6 of the Linux Board Porting Online Series. This is the second in a series of three modules which are centered around debugging U-Boot from source code using JTAG in Code Composer Studio. In this module, I'm going to show you how to set up a Code Composer Studio project to rebuild U-Boot. Now that Code Composer Studio is installed, let's go ahead and launch it. And I have also installed the SDK at the home user directory. I'm going to take the default workspace, go ahead and let Code Composer boot up. Uh, now the first time you open a new workspace, you'll get this Welcome to Code Composer Studio screen. I'm just going to exit out of that. And then let's create a new project. So File, New. Um, and then project dot dot dot. Here I'm going to expand the C, C++ and choose make file project with existing code. Uh, browse to under home user. Here's the SDK and um, so TI SDK directory then under there we go to board support and locate the U-Boot source code directory. Um, just select the directory and press OK. I'm also going to select the cross GCC tools in order uh, for those to be used to index the project. Once that's been created, um, you can see here all of that code for U-Boot has been imported into the project. I'm going to right click on the project there and go down to properties. We're going to need to update our path variable so that the um, so the Code Composer Studio is able to locate our cross compile tools. So go to environment and here where there's the path variable this is where we're going to have to put in the location of our cross build tools. I always forget the exact location in terms of typing it in, so uh, here I'm going to go to a terminal, change into the SDK directory, and then under Linux Dev Kit and Bin, you see here these are the cross compiler tools. If I do a PWD or print working directory, I can then do Control Shift C and that'll copy the entire path for me. Going back to Code Composer Studio, I'll just double click here on the path variable and use Control V to insert what I just copied out of the terminal and then put a colon in to separate it from the next item. Press OK here and OK here and now the Code Composer Studio path variable has been updated so that it can find the cross compile tools. The next thing that we need to do is put in make file um, or um, make rules. So, uh, or I should say make targets. So we go to show view, make, and make target. Um, and here we select our U boot project. And this little bullseye with the plus sign will allow us to do a new make target. Uh, the first make target we need is am335x underscore evm underscore config. This is going to be the configuration step that will tell U-Boot that we're building for the am335x platform. Even though I'm using a BeagleBone Black, it's actually the am335x evm config that is used for BeagleBone White, BeagleBone Black, the AM335X starter, starter kit and of course the AM335X EVM. Now under the rules for the build command we need to insert additional arch which stands for architecture equals arm and then cross underscore compile equals and you might recall when we were at the terminal before uh, this was the prepended bit before the GCC it's arm ergo dash Linux dash GNU E A B I and then don't forget the final dash. I'm going to put in a second target. The second target is going to be U dash boot dot bin. This is the binary that we're building. 
So in order to build U-Boot, you need two steps. The first one is the configure step, then the second one is the actual build step. And as before, we're going to put the same the same environment variables in, uh, the arch and cross compile. Now that we have that, I can go ahead and expand this. Our new targets are going to be at the very end here. So you can either double click this or I'll just select it and then hit the little hammer, which will do the build. I'm going to make this small. Notice here's our build console. So if I expand that, we got a successful configuration. This is showing the command that was executed at the terminal and the feedback, all of which is correct or what would be expected. Next, I'll go back to the make targets and select the uboot.bin. Uh, go ahead and tell it to build. Now this takes a little bit longer than the configuration. If I expand the console, you can see it building. And I'm going to pause again so that you don't have to wait for the entire U-Boot to build. After a few minutes, uh, hopefully you'll get to this point where you see a successful build of U-Boot.bin, the U-Boot binary. Now finally, we're going to need a rule to build the SPL, so Here we'll do a new make target and put in spl slash u dash boot um, dash spl dot bin. Uh, by the way, if you have u boot dot bin highlighted when you press the add new, you'll notice that it starts you off with a copy so you don't have to fill in the build command again. Uh, now that we have that, we can also build the SPL. If you wanted, you could additionally put in a clean rule, um, but we don't need to do a clean operation for this lab, so I'm just going to skip that. And here uh, we see it building the SPL. This concludes Module 6 of the Linux Board Porting Online Series. This is the second in a series of three lab exercises where we are setting up debugging, JTAG-based debugging, for U-Boot. In the seventh module, which is the final module of the U-Boot series, we will actually be using JTAG to debug U-Boot in Code Composer Studio.